You know, did you have a good voyage, Captain? My first officer is dead, ten seamen and the ship's boy, more than a third of my crew. Oh, well, God rest their souls. But the lifeblood of commerce is goods, sir, goods. How fares your cargo through the passage, Captain? Three thousand elephant teeth have survived the voyage. <laughs> you are a pretty wit, sir, a pretty wit. Elephant teeth, indeed. <laughs> 140 Negroes were loaded aboard Lord Ligonier in the mouth of the Gambia River. Ah, uh, loose pack. Mm. Well? Of those, 98 were alive when we made port. 98? Oh, less than a third dead. I have known slavers to make port with less than half surviving and still show a handsome profit. My felicitations, Captain. How soon can I unload? Directly we warp your vessel to the war. I want you to secure for me flowers of sulfur to burn in the hold. I wish to see my ship clean again. Oh, and naturally, sir. After all, you'll be carrying tobacco to London. And in London, trade goods for the Guinea coast, and then on to the Gambia River. A more slave. Indeed, sir. Thus does heaven smile upon us point to point in a golden triangle. Tobacco, trade goods, slaves, tobacco, trade goods, and so on, ad infinitum. All profit, sir, and none the loser for it. Tell me, Mr. Carrington, do you ever wonder? On what topic, sir? To what end? As to whether or not we are just as much imprisoned as are those chained in the hold below? I do not follow your meaning, sir. It sometimes feels that we do harm to ourselves by taking part in this endeavor. Harm? What harm can there be in prosperity, sir? What harm is a full purse, I'd like to know? No. No. I doubt that you'd like to know, Mr. Carrington. I doubt that either of us would truly like to know. Would you be interested in coming to the auction, Captain? I warrant you've never seen anything like it. No, I am sure I have not, Mr. Carrington. I do know that I am not interested in seeing it now or ever. Dee, 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 dee. Half a pound of tuppenny rice and half a pound of treacles. Well, 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 well. Now, what have we here? My God, I have a hard enough task mending three months on a slaver. Without new whip wheels to salve. Uh, benchmarks again. This fellow's bones are showing through. Is it festered? Not more than usual, sir. Laudable pus. Merely laudable pus. Papey's worth a tar, and he'll be fit for your auction. Tar! Ah! Well, they'll be ready for auction on the 7th of October. Now, there is a horse race meet then, and I would take advantage of the attraction. Coat them with oil then. Flaxseed oil covers a multitude of skins, eh? <laughs> you give the wild-eyed ones a dose of laudanum, and the dull ones a dollop of brandy, and may the buyer beware. <laughs> you sent for me, Mr. Carrington? Uh, oh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, here is the text for an advertisement I wish to place. Just imported in the ship Lord Ligonier, Captain Davies, from the River Gambia, to be sold in Annapolis for cash or good bills of exchange on Wednesday, the 7th of October next, a cargo of choice, healthy slaves. I'll, I'll put slaves in big type, sir. Catches the eye. Yes, yes. And uh, I shall also... 
and I shall want handbills, broadsides to pass out at the race meeting. There is a bit of a poser, sir. Over broadsides. Over How so, I Master McGill? These are busy times in the printing trade, sir, especially handbills. It's politics, 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 politics. We have Burgess Patrick Henry's speech in the Virginia colony, correspondence from Boston. There's a new Townsend tax, sir, more bother than the old Stamp Act in 65. I am with Burgess Henry and the rest in my passion for liberty, but business, sir, is business. I will pay hard money in advance for my handbills.